Welcome to episode 373, Daniel Ake, co-founder of Spotify, an online music streaming king of the world. This is an outline of episode 373. There are three reasons why we study Daniel Ake. First, at age 35, he's one of the youngest self-made billionaires. Second, he is from a small country, Sweden, with a small market. Third, he has been a global disruptor of the music industry since he started Spotify in 2006. That was 12 years ago. Let us meet Daniel Ake. Recently, you guys said, you did, this wasn't an R. Kelly ban, but you said there's a bunch of artists that we don't like because of their personal behavior. We don't want to promote them. R. Kelly was one of them. There's a rapper whose name I cannot pronounce. I'm not going to try to. Um, there's a lot of furor about that. You recently changed those decisions. Can you explain why you made the first decision and, and what, why you made the second decision? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, if you just take two steps back and kind of look at what it is we try to accomplish. I think we're now at a point where we're obviously a material part of the music industry. We have three million artists on the platform. We have 170 million consumers using this. And as a platform, one of the key things that we believe in uh, is just being transparent. Um, and I think it's something that uh, more and more platforms are waking up about and thinking a lot more about. We're talking about that. Yeah. And, and so what we really just wanted to do was just be transparent about it. And there's two pieces specifically um, that we rolled out. One was about hate speech. Um, and I think that's sort of less controversial. And then there's the other one about uh, conduct. Daniel Ake was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1983. His family is working class, but his grandmother is an opera singer. At age 13, he started his own business, initially charging $100 per website. This is a picture of Daniel Ake at ninth grade. By age 14, he has become a C++ and HTML guru. By age 18, he was employing 25 people and making $50,000 a month. The year was 2001. He was already rich. He dropped out of KTH Royal Institute of Technology. He was already rich at age 23 and could retire. Then he bought a red Ferrari, hang out with a lot of beautiful girls and his drinking buddies. And after a while, he found himself deeply depressed. He sold everything and retrenched into this little red hut in search of the meaning of life. In 2003, he co-founded Spotify with his friend Martin Lawrenson. And then uh, Spotify, you were? 23. 23 when you started it. Was youth an advantage in starting those companies? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I, I think, you know, if you ask entrepreneurs, would you have done it no. if you knew how hard it would be? Most mm -hmm. would have said no. Mm -hmm. um, but because you're young, and in my case, you're quite naive, you kind of go into situations like, hey, this can't be too hard. Um, <laughs> when, when I started Spotify, I didn't actually know that I needed licenses from record labels. So I was like, well, you know, we'll, we'll this is it easy. Out. You stream it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I got introduced to some people and said, no, 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 you kind of need some lights as well. That can't be too hard. You know, surely they must be up for it. It took me about two and a half years later to <laughs> kind of get started. Um, but, it, you know, I think that's what kept me going because I saw the solution. I didn't see the problems in the way as to all this broadband. It was so obvious to me after getting Napster, Kazaa and all these services that this is the way that people want to consume music. And the more I started researching it, it actually turned out that there was a half a billion people that consume music that way. And at, at the same time, uh, musicians were struggling and they can't make money out of music anymore. So they keep doing it for touring and they kept doing all these things. And for me at the time, it was quite obvious that, and, and when we started Spotify, this is in 06, um, iTunes still sold DRM track. Um, you know, they were copyright protected songs. You couldn't play them anywhere. Um, the quality was 160 kilobits. Mm. And at the same time, I could uh, go to, you know, a Pirate Bay or a Kazaa and download the same song pretty much as fast 
in lossless quality and with no protection whatsoever. So it was obvious to me that for the first time in history, the pirated product was actually a lot better than the one you could buy. So mm -hmm. no wonder why people use pirated yeah. services. And the US invasion of Spotify in 2008, helped by Sean Parker on the right side of the picture. Streaming music is the future, but is it impoverishing a lot of artists? It may surprise you. 317 billion. That's the number of music streams in 2015. It's close to double the number of streams in 2014, but for most musicians, those extra streams aren't bringing in extra dollars. Just look at the royalties streaming services are paying. At the top, Google Play at 73,000th of a cent per play. At the bottom is YouTube at 3 ten thousandths of a cent. Stephen, those numbers are really, really appalling. I think it's actually the opposite. In many ways, streaming is saving the music industry and it's really restoring the growth that the industry has been missing for years. Streaming is the primary, is going to be, and is today, particularly among millennials and, and younger generations, the primary way of consuming music. So it is- Is that true for it, everyone? It, it I'm curious, is that be... true for everyone in the audience? For, for streaming music, put your hands up if you've streamed music. Whoa. Okay, so you're right, it is the primary way. That's the answer. First off, YouTube, which is paying the least, is the world's biggest music streaming service. If you took all those YouTube uh, music listeners and converted them to $9.99 a month, they would be paying a lot more money than the average person pays. That's why if we convert all listeners to subscribers, streaming can be the future and it could begin to pay better, not just for labels, but to artists. But that is also not... Do you think streaming makes it harder or easier for young artists to break through? I think it's probably easier than ever to make a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. I think it's harder than ever to make a lot of money. If you are of the mindset that all your favorite musicians should be multimillionaires, then you should have been born 25 years earlier. Spotify went IPO in April 2018 on the New York Stock Exchange, achieving a market cap of $26.5 billion. Uh, on the IPO thing, you, you did this novel IPO. It's not really an IPO, it's a direct listing. Mm. You didn't exactly cut the banks out, but you really didn't use them in a traditional way. Well, there was really three parts of that uh, that made me um, go in that direction. But one was about transparency. Just like, you know, one, one thing about the traditional process, which was done in the 1970s, is obviously the world has changed a lot. But I, I just, it just didn't sit well with me to put out this document uh, in this day and era when, when uh, information is like this. The second thing was um, when you really think about it, the whole process uh, obviously openly is supposed to be so that everyone has the same amount of information. Yeah, what actually happens in practice is you do this quiet roadshow and give some people a little bit more information and then you kind of open the doors and you hope that those people will then hold your stock. Um, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted everyone to have exactly the same information. And then thirdly, more importantly, uh, as part of this, um, I, I didn't want to put anyone in a different boat. So most often what happens is that the investors gets to sell early on, um, the employees do not. I did not want that at all. I Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Daniel Aik. 10 Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.